Hello, this is Stephen Nojiri and this is another Tata Genji Traditions video. This video we're going to take a break from looking at something specific from history and we're going to actually take a moment to look at the process of history itself or a small aspect of it. This video is for the purpose of explaining some more of the mechanical aspects of dealing with the old samurai manuals, particularly what we're discussing are the Gungaku manuals. So these are war tactics, leadership skills, things like that. We are not discussing martial arts manuals. I have to be very clear about this. Martial art documents have their own unique history and sort of mechanical techniques, the culture of martial arts scrolls, if you will, uh, as opposed to or in compare and contrast to Gungaku manuals. So Gungaku manuals have their own history and method and martial arts scrolls have their own history and method and it's it, and they are not the same so specifically we're discussing gungaku and let's focus on two main aspects of these gungaku manuals first we're going to look at the idea of complex versus simple uh, which is older and i'll tell you now that uh, there that simple it does not mean older but we'll get to that and then the second thing is analysis of the writings for various factors that can help determine the date and the authorship of the text. So what we're talking about now is not reading the text for teachings or reading the text for uh, the this sort of lessons, but reading the text mechanically, analyzing the actual structure of the text to get historical data from the how the text was written versus what is being written. And for you ninja fans, yes, most shinobi manuals follow the Gungaku rules. So uh, what we're discussing will also apply to most shinobi manuals. Not all, but most of them. So let's jump right into complex versus simple, which is older. So the mistake that a lot of people make is to believe that simpler is older. And that is not a valid assumption, and oftentimes it is incorrect. So let me say that again. Simpler does not automatically mean older. There are there are some times when the simpler object or the simpler version is older, and there are times when the more complex version is older. It, so and it requires study and research and analysis to figure out which one is older. Simply believing that the simple one is older is a mistake. It's often wrong. Uh, on your screen, you can see I've put two sort of modern, you know, sort of like modern day compared to, well, not modern day, but examples of, of, of non-samurai things like, in other words, I've used these two religious traditions to try to point this out quicker. So an example of these mistakes would be like when British researchers made the mistake of thinking that Theravada Buddhism was older than Mahayana because they believed the Theravada to be simpler. Now this is not, this is not only not true based on Buddhism's own history of itself, but it can also be proven to be not true by non-Buddhist historians who specialize in the uh, academic research of early Buddhism. So this video is not going to go into that, but if you're interested, you can research this yourself and you can see how this mistake was made and why this mistake is incorrect. Um, for people who are familiar with like uh, with Christian branches in the United States, this next uh, example should be pretty clear. The Southern Baptist branch of Christianity uh, it, from the Southern United States is far simpler than the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church is far more complex than Southern Baptist ideology, yet we know for a fact that the Catholic Church is much older than the Southern Baptist branch. So these are examples of where you, you can see that simpler does not automatically mean that it is the older one. So in my own work with Gungaku, I have seen far more examples of documents that become shortened or become simplified over time rather than documents becoming more complex over time. The, the usual pattern, the vast majority of the Gungaku texts that I have read, studied, worked on, analyzed, start off complex and become shortened and simplified over time. 
The older transcriptions usually have more material, and the younger transcriptions are often missing sections, just missing entire sections, or they have the sections slimmed down. Many times, the younger versions will even just say kudin in places where the older document has an entire section. So the, the older document, the more complex document, has, say, three pages on this one topic. But then the younger transcription, the simpler, slimmed down, younger transcription, will maybe have half a page and then just say kudin. And it's not really kudin because the older copy has it already written out. But the simpler, younger copy is actually uh, trying to just slim down what is written. So that's why, uh, many times, why it just says kudin, because they're just trying to shorten what's being written. The Kusunoki Ryu documents, a lot of them follow this pattern. The older version contains material that is just missing from later transcriptions. There is only one document in the Kusunoki tradition that I can think of, just one where new material is added in a younger version. But even this document is missing other older material elsewhere in the document. And there's a specific history to this document and the lineages crisscrossing for this document to explain why the, this particular section is added. But even though it does have an added section, it still follows the general trend because other parts of the document is missing older material. Now again, I must emphasize that this refers to Gungaku manuals, not martial arts scrolls. Gungaku manuals are a combination of military tactics, politics, economic policies, leadership skills, religious teachings, family cultural practices, etc., 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 Whereas martial arts scrolls, like Kinjutsu scrolls, for example, they come from specific schools and they tend to be short, and many times they're just simply list of technique names. Because the function of a Gungaku scroll is not the same function of a martial arts scroll. Their purpose is different, the history is different, and the culture surrounding them is different. Uh, what I mean is the culture of Gungaku versus the culture of a martial arts school. The purpose of it is different. This now, this now, I need to be clear and say that this also doesn't apply to certificate documents. So those certificate documents, they might be associated with the Gungaku tradition, but if it's a certificate document, it usually also functions similar to a martial arts scroll, and that it's often simple and direct. The Fukushima Ryu Shinobi no Maki is an example of that. If a full the if there existed a full Gungaku text of the Shinobi no Maki, uh, the, the, the Fukushima Shinobi no Maki, it would have been a large Gungaku text. But because the Fukushima Shinobi no Maki is a certification document, in other words, Fukushima Masanori wanted some kind of document uh, to be written up, it's more of a certificate document than it is an, uh, a home of teaching. So it it's associated with the Gungaku tradition, but it functions like a similar purpose uh, that a martial arts scroll would.